Let's learn to play Amazing Cultivation Simulator. This is a game that has as much to offer as RimWorld or Dwarf Fortress, but it is very hard to play. It's got a real sharp learning curve. So let's go ahead and make a video on how to play it. You're going to want to mod Show Lost Stats. This is going to make your early game really, really easy, and you'll understand what's going on much, much more clearly. So pick it. Over here, you're going to see Tie the Knot. I recommend that one too. It's not critical, it just introduces kids and marriages, but uh, you know, it's fun. We're going to play in classic mode. I recommend bumping this up to large if your computer can handle it, and then drop the tribulation difficulty all the way down. Tribulation is a mid-game event that punishes you for not optimizing your characters, and you don't know how to optimize your characters yet, so, you know, don't, don't walk straight into that fire. Go ahead and lower that difficulty so that you can actually play. We're going to see some text. The important thing about this text is that your old sect is called the Tai-Yi sect. Tai-Yi, remember that. The reason is because every time a secret crops up that says the Tai-Yi, you want to immediately go investigate. That's free money. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Here we can see our character creator. You're going to really notice these animal people immediately. We got a ton of animal people mixed in with our humans. This is a trap. You see up here, shapeshift tribulation 79 days. After 79 days, this lady will turn into a monster, kill all your people, and ransack your base. So, um, yeah, don't, don't take animal people. It is possible to get them to survive this tribulation. It's not something you want to try and figure out as soon as you're starting the game. Uh, you can go ahead and accept animal people as they walk in later on once you have um, an understanding of how to get people to golden core rank. We're going to stick with humans. Down here we've got a bunch of options. The dirty secret about this options list is that most of these are things you're going to get for free in the first month of the game. You're going to unlock these core five martial arts, you're going to unlock these manuals, you're going to be able to build your own artifact and recruit your own people and make your own food and mine your own resources. Very few of these are going to be of any long-term help. The thing is, they do help you go faster in the beginning, but this isn't a game about speed. It's a game about doing the right thing at the right time. Still, let's talk about the basics. These five martial arts are uh, the core martial arts. You get one for each element. True Sun Disciple is the recommended one for the beginner, for beginners, and the reason is because you'll accidentally do everything right. You'll accidentally have enough mana to do artifact crafting even if your key sense is low. Uh, they like the default wooden rooms, so they're very easy to get along with, and that's why they're recommended. Plow Disciple is also pretty easy. It's a combat-focused class um, that gets along well with earthen rooms, and we'll talk about that later on. Uh, 16 Steps, uh, Sunflower, and Reincarnator. These are challenging as your first martial arts. I would recommend avoiding them for now. Casual Cultivator, just don't bother with for now. Uh, but then we've got these five additional martial arts, these super expensive martial arts. These are advanced martial arts, but once again, they are one per element. The reason these are so expensive is because you won't find them in the game. It requires a tremendous amount of luck to unlock even one of them. You might think, well, okay, well, one extra martial art, is that really going to matter? The key to optimizing your characters and making them do things the way you want to do them is that you can trade techniques between martial arts. So if you were to train up a true sun disciple, you might go ahead and inherit some, some martial art techniques from the 16 steps disciple that you've got. This will allow you to customize exactly how your martial arts are unfolding. Well, how well you can transfer techniques depends on the match between the elements. So if you were to take an alchemy legacy character, this is a fire element martial art. So is true sun disciple. You unlock all of these pretty quick. So that means that if you've got the Alchemy Legacy and then you unlock the True Sun Disciple, you're going to have a really, really good synergy. You're going to be able to have both of those martial artists learn the other people's technique super, super cheap. This is why these are so expensive. I'm not going to tell you you should take them. You can do whatever you want. If you do decide to take them, I would avoid the Heaven Stealing Legacy. 
it's quite a challenge and it's uh doesn't really contribute to any of the other martial arts uh, but you know do what you want because we are planning to do a tutorial we have to hit the ground running so we are in fact going to choose some of this stuff over here um, and some basic martial art instead just because it'll make the early game a little bit faster which isn't normally a concern but it is a concern if you are trying to record a tutorial so what we're looking for is someone that's got good cultivation stats especially key sense and some stats over here that will match one of our martial arts so um, we're just going to hit refresh. Uh, look, here's someone with some magic. Their key sense is uh, mediocre. It's not too bad. Um, you can see they don't really line up with the martial arts that we might use, though. So we're just going to keep trying. Oh, here's a battle character, but their key sense is very poor. Uh, that's not a bad match. The uh, the lineup they've got with Plow Disciple is is promising. Um, yeah, so this character is fine. We could probably take him. The only issue is that uh, his key sense is super low, and that means his maximum key is going to be super low, which is going to be a real problem. Um, let's let's try just a little bit more here so you can sort of see what sort of setup we've got. Oh, look at this. A warrior with wonderful key sense. That's going to work out great. The only problem is that she's not a great match for any of these martial arts. It's not, not great, but she'll do. Uh, we can take her in as a true sun disciple, which is going to be a very easy way to do things. Uh, we can increase her charisma and other stats uh, through the game. We can, we can find a martial art to do that. What other techniques do we want? Well, since we're trying to hit the ground running, we're going to take an extra person. Uh, there it is. And we're also going to just grab some extra materials. Uh, and that should be enough for us. Oh, you know what? I think it would be better to take Manual Saver, Savior, just so you can see what manuals are. Here we've got three more characters. We want to make sure they're humans. Uh, these characters could be martial artists. It wouldn't be bad if we set them up to be. But the most critical thing we need is uh, some stuff over here. Construction, crafting, medicine. Those are the things we need. And this lady is great at all of them. So we'll go ahead and take her. Uh, she doesn't have stars on all of them, but the rank is quite high, and that's plenty good for us. Uh, these other characters can be whatever we want. It doesn't really matter for the sake of, of uh, you know, tutorial, but um, there. We've got another crafter. That's good enough. He's lazy, but that's fine. Uh, oh, a miner. That's good. We'll just go ahead and take these characters. Kaboom. Obviously, you'll probably spend a little bit more time on it because you're, you know, you're trying to build your, uh, your, your setup. Here we've got our true sun refining law. This is the law we picked to start with. We can see what sort of law it is. We'll get to that when we actually have a character that can use it. And uh, this is our anemic little starting base. And here are our four starting characters. There's one hidden behind the tree. The good news is we immediately get a friend. Come on, friend. There we are. Shapow. So our friend will kind of just hang around and protect us, and that's going to be a huge help. Um, because the animals in this game are incredibly dangerous to untrained martial artists. They will just kick your butt. You can get killed by chickens and rabbits. So, you know, that's that. Uh, we're going to want to try and find a really good spot for a base. You don't want to be in too much of a rush. Your characters can survive sleeping on the ground and eating uh, leaves for a surprising length of time. So what we're going to want to do is set up some explore flags. And by the way, uh, you're going to want to avoid taking blind characters as starting characters, because they will happily go out to these explore tags and not see anything. Uh, it's kind of a huge waste of everybody's time. We're also going to want to build this bonfire. The only reason we want to is because that's what we have to do in order to unlock um, the rest of the construction techniques. Here we've got our casket. This is one of the bonuses that we asked for, and it contains some manuals. Let's see what manuals it contains. Ah, look, some basic stuff. That's not too bad. So these are manuals. These manuals, here's a, a recipe book. Um, here's a location book. Uh, here is a bonus to constitution. That's not too shabby. Um, and then here's Soul Inquiry, which, which is a way to steal techniques from dead people. These manuals are things that anybody can pick up and learn once they become a martial artist. And that's what I was talking about before. You can trade techniques. And manuals are basically 
a way to do that. They're not the best way to do it, but they are a way to do it. We're, we're, we're not going to have to worry too much about these manuals for now, though. I am interested in this talisman, though. This came out of the tree, I think. I don't remember asking for it. Uh, these talisman elements can be equipped on whoever you want. And here you can see that all it really does is give a barrier power bonus, and we don't have any any martial artists, so we're not going to worry about that. But talisman are a fantastic cheat. We have built a fireplace, and therefore we are ready to build a lot of other stuff. Look at all of the stuff we unlocked. Great, right? The first thing you're going to want is a timber station. Now the reason for that is because you don't have very much timber to start with, and if you don't build a timber station, you're going to use your timber up on something else. And then you're going to have to build a material workplace, and that's not nearly as good, so just start with a timber station. Now, as we're wandering around, we're looking for two things. We want iron ore, which we found right here, not bad. And we also want a place to farm. This would be a great place to farm, but if we happen to find a spirit soil nearby, we'd prefer that. So we're kind of looking around, seeing whether or not we've got any spirit soil within range. This is an animal. As I mentioned, animals are extremely dangerous. The female bull will go berserk and kill anybody who happens to walk by about 50% of the time. So you need to keep your eye on any sort of exploration. If you're trying to expand into an area that's got wild animals in it, you're going to have to worry that they're going to kill you. Uh, later on, we'll learn how to you know, tease those animals into a trap. But for now, uh, all we can really do is keep our eye open. Oh, look, we've got this glowing tree. Glowing trees are spirit wood trees. These things produce a very, very valuable resource for the early game called spirit wood. I recommend that you chop down poplar trees. Here's one you can see kind of hiding behind here. Uh, poplar trees won't survive the winter. So if you see a poplar tree that's glowing, just cut it down immediately, grab that spirit wood for free. These will survive the winter, which means they can get bigger and they can produce... Uh, resources without you chopping them down and stuff like that. Uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to chop them down. Our timber station's ready. Let's go ahead and set that up. Just loop forever, getting us some timber. And now let's chop down some trees. So those look tasty. Make sure that you're targeting um, uh, poplars and pines and stuff. Uh, cutting down ginkgos and pear trees isn't terrible, but they do produce a, quite a bit of food and medicine. So you don't want to do it just willy-nilly for kicks. The other things we're going to want to build, a handicraft station is going to be very valuable because it will let us build the things we need to build in order to cut down more trees. Now, we're going to go, go over here into the work setup, and you can see that we've got a pretty spotty setup by default. The default setups are usually pretty bad, so you're going to want to make sure that you've got enough people working the various uh, um, situations here. One thing to remember is that your first character is probably going to turn into a martial artist, at which point they will stop doing anything useful. So this logging, for example, isn't going to happen. We're going to want to be careful to set that up so that um, we do have loggers still, even after we promote the character. And that looks pretty decent. We've got a couple of things we can set up for free, so we might as well do that. This is a training setup. Uh, they'll just go there to do their morning training. Woohoo. Oh, look, another poplar with some spirit wood. Super useful stuff. I just immediately grab it every time I see it. It's especially useful to us since we are using a fire type character, which we'll get to once we actually you know, start to do that. See these complaints about not having a tool? That's why we have this wood handicraft station. We're going to want to uh, create some more axes, and then we'll create some pickaxes and some farming tools. We're also going to want some wood offcuts and stuff, but before we do most of this, let's go ahead and back up, because we want to plan for the future. The game isn't about rushing. You, know, you don't need to move very fast, but it would be nice if we understood what we're going to need. We're going to need uh, a martial artist that can recruit other characters, and that is going to be a charismatic martial artist. These will give us charisma. So we're going to go ahead and create a bell and a bracelet. That will allow us to promote our martial artist pretty quick, get them charismatic to up, and then get them out the door. Then we'll do the pickaxe, the farming tools, the ground. This is just stuff for flooring. Um, yeah, that should be fine. We're going to want some bows after that. Just grab some of them. 
There we are, just stack it all up because it's fine. They'll work on it as they get the option. Now that we've got plenty of timber coming in, we're going to want to start to build some of the rest of this. Wells are critical to, you know, surviving, so we're going to go ahead and put one in. Uh, and we also want a stone workstation because stone is going to be important for um, uh, creating our, our uh, more advanced stations. But you can see that we've got some really risky stuff happening here. This wolf will certainly attack us at some point in the near future. And they are super dangerous. And a wolf could easily kill one of our characters. So we need to be a little bit aware that that danger is there. The good news is that it's very close to this martial artist. So he'll probably protect us. All right, we've got our bell and our bracelet. We're really ripping through this quite fast because we have a character that's quite a good craftsman. And now we've got this wood stonework. Brownstone is this basic stone that we've got, and we're going to want some of that. So let's go ahead and just mark it as mineable like this. That should be plenty of brownstone for us. We can just destroy this. We don't need it anymore. You could make some dried meat with it, but there's not really any reason to. All right. So now that we've got brownstone right here, we can start to build more advanced elements. Uh, the most, most important one you're going to want immediately is a stove. But we're going to want to understand where we're going to be setting up our base, exactly what would be a good place for it. We want to set it up pretty close to the stone, but more importantly, we want to set it up close to the farm elements. So I think right here is a pretty good spot for our base. The kitchen would make a lot of sense at putting it right up next to the farms. So we're going to go ahead and put the kitchen here. Just plonk that down. It can be moved later, so there's not a big problem. The kitchen also is going to want a water vat next to it, so we might as well create one and just plonk it down near the kitchen. We're also going to want some beds. We got four people listed, but we actually have five because this dude is with us and he will claim a bed. Uh, you want to put beds to the north of most of what you're doing, so we're just going to plonk them down at random for now. We'll work out exactly what we want later. Um, but. Uh, the room orientation in this game does matter, and I'll teach you how to learn how it matters, but for now, uh, just remember that bedrooms generally face south and kitchens face west. That's why we've got this, so that we can face it west. we got some folks sleeping on the ground, which is not a big issue. We could be faster. Ooh, that was... See, I told you, the wolf would attack. Uh, once the wolf is unconscious, because the martial artist hit it with a big stack of wood, interesting... Uh, go ahead and tag it for hunting so that it won't get back up. But Da Chang got bitten by a wolf. Um, it's not too bad. It looks like it's already dealt with it. I think we're going to be fine. But it's super easy for that to just kill someone, so be very careful. There we go. Now we've got plenty of meat for our stove. We might as well tell it to create some food. Do, 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 do. No problem, right? We can also like harvest food and stuff, but we have plenty of food. There's no reason to rush it. Uh, it would make more sense for us to get our base operational first. Now, the martial artist that we've got is up here. They're a talented hunter, logger, and they can do a little bit of crafting, but basically all they're good for is, is carrying stuff around. So let's turn them into a martial artist. How do you do that? Well, the normal way you do it is that you have this foundation. This foundation will, will increase over time, but if you wait for this to fill up on its own, you're going to be stuck without a martial artist for months. So I recommend that you uh, take a shortcut for your first one. And they've provided you with this tool, the forming pill. That will simply max out your foundation immediately, but you've only got one. Now, if you would like your characters to uh, become martial artists faster, you can hit work hard. This will reduce their mood a little bit, but it will make them become martial artists, and that's kind of a priority for us, so we're going to just tag all of them. There we go. As for Rong Yuan, uh, we're going to have them just eat the forming pill as fast as possible. There we go, and boom! 
we're now going to be able to be a martial artist. Chapao. This is the only one we've unlocked, so let's take it. You might notice that our stats are a little bit different. The forming pill temporarily boosts them. Don't get distracted. Now, in order for our martial artist to um, really uh, excel, they're going to need a place to stay that is their own. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to start to build some rooms. Um, we actually don't need to build a martial artist specific room just yet, but what we do need is a bed for them. So we'll go ahead and stick a bed there. And then we'll wait for them to finish their breakthrough. Boom. Once you can establish a sect, things change quite a bit. Over here is the sect uh, button. We can go ahead and call this the tutorial sect. We're going to need to establish a leader. There's only one person we can pick. But the most critical thing we're going to need is to cl click this sect meal button. Unless you like mini managing, you know, min maxing every single meal everybody's ever going to eat, you're going to want to just go with sect meal. That will automatically queue the meals up, automatically distribute them. It's very, very easy. You don't need to worry about it. Are you still injured? No. These just stay there for a really long time. So now that that's happening, our martial artist can't actually do anything because there's no place for them to sleep or uh, train. So instead, we're going to immediately send our martial artist out into the world. We're down here, and there are a lot of places we could go. Each of these places here can give you a resource. If you want cotton, you can get cotton. You want spirit leaf, you can get spirit leaf. You just go on an adventure there and you bring it back. But that's not really the best thing to do with these places. If we go down to Mount Copper Tomb, for example, we would probably want to camp. Because if we've got someone camped there, we can go in. If you go inside these places, you can loot them. And you'll get hundreds and hundreds of pounds of copper or uh, of ore or whatever is down there. This is also the way that you can get things like the formations and stuff. If you have ever tried to play this game, we're like, how do I unlock formations? It's, it's hidden away in one of these uh, three places that you can go. So just go there and go through it, and you'll find a corpse and loot the corpse, and there'll be stuff there. And the same is true with all of them. You can get... Uh, uh, you can get some purple pills from Alchemist's Peak. You can do stuff like this. These are all great resources. But the thing we're going to be doing is going to the City of Abundance. Now, the reason for that is simple. We would like to have 12 people in our sect. If we take a look, 12 people is the maximum number of people we can have. So uh, we can recruit those people from cities. We can also recruit them if they wander in at random, but we would prefer to uh, to have some control over it. Since our martial artist is now gone on an adventure, uh, we don't have to, uh, you know, feed them or house them. <laughs> you can see Feng Rui got hurt. That is a stubbed toe. I really do not like how stubbed toes show up as the same exact kind of injury notification as you got gored by a bull and died. It would be super nice to, uh, to have a little bit more fidelity there. We unlocked a lot more buildings now that we have a sect, and more uh, importantly, we unlock the display. We're going to want to put together a display out of some timber right next to the bed of our martial artist. The reason for that is pretty simple. We are going to want to set our martial artist up with some mana. We want to try and charge the area with key so that the martial artist can absorb that key. The easiest way to do that is to find a key gathering item, and spirit wood is definitely the perfect fit for us. See how it says gather key, 20 range 4? 20 key is not much, but it's enough for our beginner martial artist. So we'll go ahead and tell them to put it up there once those exist. They, they don't exist yet, sorry. Uh, so these came from the glowing trees we cut down. You can get earth key elements uh, from down here, and this you just chop enough... Uh, enough brown rock away and you'll get some earth key stuff going on but for us we don't need that yet we need the the spirit wood everybody's training just let them train oh i forgot to equip him with the i was supposed to put this wood bell and bracelet on them so that he would have a or she would have a better um chance of recruiting people but unfortunately i did not do that Let's chop down this tree so we can see our kitchen. And we are down at 119 food, which is a little bit low. So we're going to go ahead and harvest some pears and stuff. Just grab it. Uh, maybe not that one. There's a bull near it. 
Oh, we've got some poplar trees over there. We'll go ahead and just claim those. Oh, my stomach is grumbling. So the night has just started. And we have to wait our way through it. Uh, so I guess this would be a good time to talk a little bit about the elemental wheel. Our martial artist, Rong Yuan, is a fire martial artist. The reason that we're building her room out of wood and putting spirit wood next to her head is because you want to go one back. So she's going to really like her wooden room because wood begets fire. If we made it out of earth or ice, she would be really annoyed and upset. So this is the way it works. You want to have a wooden room for your fire element things. The other very easy martial art that I talked about is a chariot martial art, which is a metal martial art. The reason that's easy is because you can build a room out of earth quite easily. So it's, it's quite easy to, to do that as well. It's an extremely hard challenge to build a survivable room out of ice or fire, which is why in general, if you have a wood or earth based martial artist, just use wood or earth. It's not as good, but it's better than, you know, burning them to death or killing them with, with frost. This is um, something you're going to have to learn quite deeply. Uh, every single thing you build in the game will have some kind of relationship to this wheel. And this is the number one thing that confuses everybody. So just grab some more spirit wood over here, place it there. Yeah. Um, for example, these beds, they're made out of wood, which means that if we would like the bedrooms to be super, super nice, we would have to build the floor and the walls and the decorations out of ice, which would kill people. So, you know, not great. Uh, if you do want to have optimal bedrooms, you would build the beds out of metal and then build the room out of earth. But in our case, we can just build everything out of wood and it'll be not, not optimal, but it'll be better than nothing, right? It'll be decent. So that's what we're going to do. For our uh, martial artist's room, we generally want to have enough space. I recommend maybe this size. It's, it's pretty good. No reason to worry about it too much. We're at the city. It popped up. We can search for disciples. Oh, nobody came. That's fine. We'll do it again later. So be very careful when you're building because it will often change the default uh, material on you without telling you, which is incredibly obnoxious, but we can't do anything about it. So now that we've got this room, we can move down for these rooms here. We don't want these beds to be where they are. Uh, a room there wouldn't make any sense. So uh, what we want instead is to figure out where we would like the rooms to be. I think we can build pretty tight here, so we'll put the wall right on top of where these beds would be. And uh, what we're going to want to do is just move these beds down. What? Why is this red? Why are these unsuitable? Oh, I'm an idiot. I have uh, training spots in the way. That's fine. We don't need these anymore. These training spots are, you know, starter training spots. What we actually want to use is these wooden dummies. These are going to be much more useful to us. We'll just put them somewhere. They can be moved later. No big deal. Now that those are moved, let's move these beds. So if we move one to here, maybe, and then we can move this one to, I don't know, here-ish, uh, we should be able to start with the room building. We probably don't have floors yet. We could put floors in. They need the offcuts to create the floors. Um, but the floors aren't really super critical at the moment. So we're, we're going to leave that for later. Uh, our well is definitely going to be in the way. So let's build another well. We always need to have one. Oh, well, there we are. We'll go ahead and put the well over here. We'll wait for night to end. By the way, there are, there are lots of ways to improve the speed of training. Uh, you can eat 
snake gallbladders or, or ginkgo. Um, and that should boost the foundation training if you really want to race to that next martial artist. But be careful because martial artists can't farm or build or anything like that. So, you know. Uh, good news is that the Outer Disciples will pick up tools automatically, but they won't pick up weapons automatically. So we're going to have to assign them a weapon if we want them to use one. So basically, what we're going to want here is a room that is 3x3. Three 3x3 three. Three three rooms are ideal for our purpose. And you can kind of see that we're building directly on top of a whole bunch of random crap. So we're going to have to, uh, to work this out and uh, try and figure out where these things need to go. Just move them at random for now. Just, just get them out of the way for the moment, and we'll, we'll get them back in working order before the day is done. The only problem is this mysterious cultivator is kind of sitting on top of one of the beds being a jerk. So we're going to have to dismantle that bed. We can't really move it because he's on it. Yeah, you can stay there for now. That's fine. Now that we've cleared up the area, we can start to create these 3x3 three three rooms. I generally do them in blocks of three just because it is a tidy way to... Um, Make, you, can, you can walk around them a little bit better. Uh, and then we're going to want to move these beds into the correct spots within these rooms. Not that there is a best spot, just need to be generally in the right place. Oh, more stubbed toes. See? Ooh, definitely worth a pop-up. So these things are starting to be in the way. No reason to keep them here. We're just going to move them over to the west. The reason we're moving them to the west is simple. Um, they should be in the west. They That's like a rule of how these things work. Uh, kitchens need a door on the west. Uh, factories, crafting stations, need a door on the east. And beds need a door on the south. Otherwise, you're going to get really terrible feng shui to the point where you will get killed. You will have this... You died of a heart attack in the middle of the night, and everybody will die. And it's like, why? Well, it's because you had bad feng shui. We're going to learn a little bit more about feng shui a little bit later, but for now, this room layout is pretty close to ideal, so go ahead and use it. Now, if we take a look, we have one hunter. It is Da Cheng. So we should take Da Cheng and give them a bow um, so that they can do a little bit of hunting. The other folk, we should give swords once we've unlocked them. Uh, the reason we haven't unlocked them is because we haven't built a forge yet. So here's a forge. I think it would go best down near the rocks, don't you? At least for now. Well, we'll go ahead and put it down here and see what happens. Uh, we're going to need a furnace for smelting that iron ore. Might as well do that too. Um, and then we are going to need a well, a water vat down here. Because these things suck down water like nobody's business. And we are going to need uh, a medicine table because we're going to run out of medicine pretty quick here. All of these things can be moved, so you can just put them wherever you want. It's no big deal. All right, so our, our sect leader is back. Our martial artist is back and already complaining. So uh, the basic thing that we're doing here is we're trying to train this martial artist up to golden core effectively. Golden core is like quite a few ranks ahead of us. There are a lot of stats to keep in mind, so let's take a quick little look. This is the cultivation section. By the way, you can move this around, and you can click on things over here, whatever we want, right? This is definitely where we're going to be spending most of our time. Over here, you can see all of the various things that are affecting the speed of her cultivation. Her mental state is terrible. That's this middle bar, and it's what's being complained about over here. So in order to raise her mental state, we're going to go ahead and click this. That will make her train her mind. Be aware that she may not stop practicing. She may go through her full practice routine, which might spike her mental state down into the negative. Because as it starts to drop, it drops really fast. So when you change someone to, to practice their mind, hit this button here. So they'll stop doing whatever annoying thing they were doing and do that instead. Pretty easy. Over here, you can see the law is not a very good match. Law is how well your stats match up with the... Um, uh, with the the thing that you're you're practicing, our blue stats fall short of this orange outline. 
but they don't fall short by that much. We're going to be able to raise our match up to 100% without too much difficulty. It might just take like a couple, you know, a couple upgrades. If we click on Inspiration, we can see what sort of items we can unlock here. The thing you're going to want to check first is Protect. You need at least one point of Protect or you will die. If you have one point of Protect, you can kill any animal, any person that's not a cultivator. But if you have zero, they will kill you. It's that easy. We do not have very much in the way of useful talents here. She's not a super talented martial artist in terms of skill. But what she has is a lot of battle talent and a lot of key sense. Her battle talent is going to come in very handy later, and her key sense determines her maximum key. If we take a look at her maximum key right now, it is 953. If this is your first time playing, you may not know how high that is. That is triple the default amount. If you were to take a, a, uh, uh, you know, a chariot-style martial artist with a low key level, they might not even have 300. So that's why key sense is critical, especially if you're going to be in a spellcasting sort of mood. Um, key is also part of how you get good golden core stats. So, you know, it's good to have a very high key level. I'm clicking on stuff in the background there. Um, but, you know, her law isn't up to snuff quite yet. So what we need to do is raise her stats. Uh, let's see. She doesn't seem to have any raise stat capabilities in her first tier. But her second tier does. Look at that. Increases max constitution by 10 and so on. These are definitely things... Oh, here. Great. Look at this. Increases each of the five attributes by 5%. So we're really not very far from being able to reach what we need to reach. However, we are going to have to go to core shaping. We're currently in key shaping. So that means we're going to have to raise our training all the way up through these and probably through another set of them before we can do this stuff here. Uh, yeah, I don't think we actually need anything. We can just let her uh, her do her stuff as it is. Oh, well, we'll have her collect um, and equip the things she needs to collect and equip. She needs a wooden bow. She might read for quite a while. It's always dicey. She needs bells. And she needs bracelets. And now we're going to send her right back out into the world. Because we really would like to have more people. Goodbye. A big reason for that is because we didn't really have enough room for her. So we're going to go ahead and just um, demolish that bed so nobody sleeps in it. Uh, and we are going to uh, put together another set of rooms a little bit later. For now, we should probably start to work on consolidating our setup here. Uh, now that we've built a forge, we can build swords and stuff. Some of these always require steel or stone or something. You see how this always requires iron bars? But swords don't. We can just build them out of timber. So we're going to build a pair of swords. Spears are definitely the best weapon in the early game because they deal a ton of deep damage, meaning that they'll kill someone by stabbing open their various inside organs. Um, but obviously, as you rank up enough, that starts to matter less because you've got, you have to fight against key-wielding beasts and you need a way to knock down their key, and spears don't really do that. But spears are great because they're fast, so there's a lot of things to like about spears. Here we've got a brownstone furnace. This will be great at turning our uh, things into bars. And I think iron bars are the thing we would like to use. We've got some iron right here. Might as well go ahead and mine some of that and get ourselves some uh, some iron. We probably also need some more brownstone by this point. We can check. Yeah, we've only got 16 bars, so we're going to want some more of both of those things. Over here, we've got our medicine cabinet. You're going to want to get your handle on medicine as fast as possible. These are the three most critical pieces. The healing pill is the best, but you do need a fairly rare ingredient called a ginkgo fruit. We've got five required, and we've got ten. We're going to go ahead and use both of those as healing pills. Healing balms are great, uh, but they're not as good as healing pills, and bone mend balms are also great. You can't use these interchangeably. You need them both. But we are short on herbs. So how do you find more herbs? Well, you just hit harvest, and then you just grab large swaths of land, and it will turn out to have herbs in them. So that's how you do it. Just adjust a 
mic a little bit here. There we are. Hopefully that wasn't too loud. Notice that the, the meals have been being cooked, but we don't have any place to eat them. I think it would be good if we did. So we're going to go ahead and create some, some tables for ourselves. Uh, i got to put them maybe here. Once again, they can be moved pretty easily, so there's not really any, uh, any reason to worry too much about exactly where they are. Now, if we were going to create a wall for our kitchen, you're going to want to realize that the kitchen will light itself on fire all the time. I have no idea why it is so prone, but it will. So I always create a kitchen with an air gap between the stove and the walls, because otherwise you're likely to light yourself on fire and die. So, yeah. Um, this does, however, mean that the kitchen is a very large room, and it's only going to get larger because you're going to eventually need two and even three stoves. Yeah, that water jug is kind of far away. It's fine. It doesn't, doesn't matter. It's, it's all good. So the kitchen is facing west because that's what kitchens are supposed to do. Um, but we won't really be able to tell that until we finish building the observatory. The observatory is just something that lets you determine whether things suck. So we'll go ahead and put that together out there somewhere. Um, it doesn't matter where it is, but it can't be moved. So... Stick it off in the middle of nowhere and leave it. The other thing we're going to need is a crafting table. Crafting tables are absolutely critical for building your artifacts. And unfortunately for us, they can't be moved. More unfortunately for us, we would really like to have one with good, um, uh, good feng shui. If we take a look at our circle here, if we build the room out of wood, then we would want to build the crafting table out of fire. We don't have any access to copper at the moment. There just wasn't any immediately on the map. Um, if we build the room out of earth, then we would want to build the crafting table out of iron. Well, we have plenty of access to iron. We just have to wait for it to come in. Uh, I think we need a little bit more. There we are. So we'll build the crafting table immediately after that. The alchemy furnace is much the same. How much you use alchemy will depend on how, uh, how good you are at um, farming and stuff like that. The low-level alchemy stuff is super useful at maxing out the productivity of your base. Uh, and the mid-level stuff is super useful at maxing out the productivity of your martial artists. The super high-level stuff is required for doing really nice stuff, but we don't have a dedicated alchemist. If we'd taken the alchemy super martial art, then we would definitely want an alchemy furnace as soon as possible. But uh, we don't have one, so we're not going to worry about it. Notice that the alchemy furnace has a weird shape. If you build walls directly against the alchemy furnace, you're going to end up having random pieces of alchemy, random pills, spawning into the gaps where nobody can reach them. So you're going to want to make sure there's an air gap around the alchemy furnace. Fortunately, the uh, crafting table doesn't require that. It's not a big deal, so. Oh, come on. You can save spam that if you really care. Uh, it's just a tutorial, so I don't. The ancestral, shrine, the, sorry, the ancestral Shrine should always point south, and you can put it wherever you want. All it really does is raise the mood of people in the base. Our mood is pretty high right now. We don't have to worry about that. When it becomes summer proper, we might... The manual pavilion is the secret power. This is the thing that will allow you to trade techniques between martial artists. Uh, and we also can, can copy these into it to allow us to teach any martial artist we want. It's really important, but we don't have two martial artists yet, so there's no reason to have it yet. We're not going to worry about it. Um, basically, this is just me saying that this is a whole bunch of stuff that you need later, but the only one you need right now is the crafting table. We're going to make it out of iron. Uh, we're going to go and just stick it over here somewhere so that it's, you know, far enough away that it's not going to interfere with our base. The only problem we've got is that even if we do make it out of iron, uh, we want the ground to be made out of earth, but we won't be able to actually pave underneath this because it's just too wide. People won't be able to reach that middle tile. It's not ideal, but since the ground is already earth, eh, who cares? Now, let's see, we've got this, the uh, feng shui. If you, uh, if you put one of these down, you can click this giant button and it will 
let you look around for the feng shui of various things, this is basically useless. It doesn't tell you how much of an element is here. It just tells you whether or not it is associated with an element. For example, we can't tell whether or not there is 20 energy here or 40 energy. All we can tell is that it is related to leaves. But the most important thing this does is it unlocks additional tool tips. So if we click on this room here, we now have this icon. And if we highlight that, it'll tell us what's up. It says plus 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 room layout, plus 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 bedroom, plus plus wood bed. Great, this is a good room. If we had pointed the door the wrong way or had too many doors, it wouldn't say plus 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 bedroom. It would say something more, more snarky. Um, and this is how you can tell whether or not you've built something okay. So yeah, that's how you do that. Please note, there are times where you might want to build super, super ominous rooms with big time negative feng shui. That's especially true if you're playing an evil sect and you want to kill people because people dying in that kind of room will produce a very rare and uh, invaluable crystal. So, you know, everybody can do it as they please. Wait, we got two people sleeping. Oh, okay. For some reason, we've got an ordinary person sleeping up here in this room. We had better build another set of room. Uh, we're just doing a tutorial, so it's we don't really care. If we were doing a real base, it would be time to build another set of three of these rooms. Um, but I would like to push through and just do some very, very basic uh, inf information dumps uh, on a couple of more pieces, and all we need for that is is for our martial artist to come home. Do, do. Oh, we, you do want some leisure, now that I'm thinking about it. For most people, leisure doesn't matter, but for martial artists, leisure is incredibly important. So, uh, once again, it's changed the default material. Did you see that? Iron bar? Yeah, we want the iron go table. That makes sense. So, if you've got martial artists, you want to make sure that you've got some leisure, because they are going to need to have their mood maxed out, their my, their mental state, and uh, obviously that works better if you've got some, some stuff for them to play with. Uh, talking about fields and herb gardens, these green patches are great. You can see down in the lower right it says fertile soil, healthy soil. That's great. Um, there is something called spirit soil, which has like glowing grass on it. It's a little bit rarer, a little bit harder to spot, uh, and that's super useful for growing herbs because herbs require a high level of um, magic. But the, here's the nasty thing about this. If we were to put down a field and select it, we can actually grow herbs. But if we were to put down an herb garden and select it, we get these, which are not quote unquote herbs, they're quote unquote herbs. So just keep in mind that herbs are different from herbs. Got it? Great. These four here are incredibly useful for alchemy um, they're not terribly useful for anything else. Uh, if you have any method of doing alchemy, you're going to want those as soon as possible. Um, although you may just go and get them by raiding the surrounding areas, as I said. Because if, if you need spirit leaf, you can just go here to get it. Um, but the food that you're going to need is great. You're going to want plenty of wheat. And the reason you're going to want more wheat than you might think, um, you don't actually need much wheat to survive. But what you need wheat for is for giving away to your settlements. Uh, that is how you, you have it. You, ha you can do charity and it costs 20 wheat per settlement per, per day. So, um, you know, have, have enough wheat for, for yourself and others. Over here, we've got herbs. These are critical for, well, that's not what I wanted to do. These are critical for making medicines. Mushrooms are really challenging to grow, but they're really critical for pets because a mushroom is the only really easy way to raise a pet's uh, key. So be aware that um, you, you, if you if you plan to do some cool pet stuff, you're probably going to want to grow some mushrooms. Managing the temperature of the mushrooms is critical. You're going to need to put them in a room and then have ways to raise and lower the temperature by putting in uh, frost or copper bars, stuff like that. So you know, be aware. Cotton is very valuable because you can make clothes out of it. And the summers are super hot and the winters are super cold. So make sure that you've got enough cotton to provide for your people at those times or you will probably lose them. The good news is that you can draw talismans. 
And if you draw a talisman, oh, he's back, good, she's back. If you draw a talisman, you start with 10 pieces of paper and you can build more at a, a thing we've already unlocked, so it's not that big a deal. Um, but if you draw on a talisman, there they are, you have an option to draw some talismans here. Cold and heat resistant talisman, these are really critical to keeping your, um, your outer disciples happy in the summer and the winter. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you've got enough of them for when things get super hot or super cold. It's much easier than trying to build air-conditioned rooms. You will shortly unlock some advanced talismans. Uh, someone will have to learn that, and that's going to be like something that they have to spend points on. But those are very valuable. You can get things to permanently improve mood or to radically improve adventure times. That sort of stuff is very valuable. Uh, but since it costs... It's something that you're you may want to have like uh so generally speaking i find them someone will reach uh inner foundation they'll be they'll be done here with their foundation they'll have figured it out but they'll be a crap martial artist they will have no stats that work out they won't have anything that that even remotely makes them useful well they'll be the person that draws all the artifacts <laughs> it's fine right because they're gonna have to spend their precious resources learning how to draw those artifacts and it doesn't have any stat requirements so go for it now, if we take a look at Rong Yuan here, in here, in here, this is how things uh, look for us. And if we have extra manuals or extra stats, they'll pop up down here for us. Um, we're going to want to be very careful. And this is where efficiency comes into play. This is not about rushing things. And I know that everybody, you know, in a base building game, rushing is the point, right? You don't want to rush things. What you really want to do is think very, very carefully about the path you want your um, your martial artist to take. Because everything you buy makes everything else more expensive. If we take a look at the character over here, they have this attainment value. Attainment goes up whenever you buy something, and it makes everything else more expensive. That includes skills, that includes extra manuals, that includes core techniques, all of this shit is 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 pricey. So if we were to buy, you know, the the chant of cloud dispelling, oh, it's it's only it's very cheap. It's only three hundred inspiration. It only adds one attainment, but that one attainment is going to end up costing way more than three hundred inspiration in the long run. And that's why you want to stick to the things that you want. And if you're not sure you want something, save the game, buy it, and see it. For example, there is a a martial art like this one. For example. Um, this one diminishes one's lifespan, which is a great way of saying that, you know, it'll kill you if you use it. So you generally don't want that unless you are using like a disposable martial artist whose only purpose is to help out the, the, the landscape around you. Uh, but there are others that are a little bit less easy to check out. There's one that will help to grow plants. And it says something about internal key or something. And if you buy it, you find out that it does the exact same thing. It eats your lifespan to grow plants. And that's just, I, I hate those. But if you don't know what they do, you may not know whether you want them. And then you'll buy them. And you'll be like, I'll never use this. Well, in that case, uh, rewind time and don't buy it because it's going to make everything else so much more expensive. In our case, for example, we could greatly increase our max key, but at the moment, our max key is fine. We're definitely going to want to buy this eventually. When we try and reach Golden Core, we're going to want as much key as possible because um, a big factor in how good your golden core is is how much key you've got but uh, it's not the only factor there are a lot of other things that make it more easy to attain golden core uh, just as an example we got all this stuff here elements season mood mental state key cozy all of these things make your your practitioner faster they, pr they practice faster, they learn faster, they go up through the Golden Core ranks faster. And because of that, it's absolutely critical for us to keep these stats nice and high. Notice that mood and mental state are both here. And in this case, we've got a mood of 177, woohoo, and a mental state of 79. Now, a 79 is great. It gives us a, a three point bonus and that's plenty. So we're gonna go ahead and change over from mind to balance just so that we can get ourselves some more stuff, right? Uh, some more some more points. But uh, the mental state will slowly go down as we practice. Um, and this is something that you're gonna wanna keep your eye on. Now the game will warn you if the mental state gets kind of low, but it's easy to miss. 
And if you miss it, the mental state can go negative in just a matter of a minute or two. So you need to be very, very careful about the mental state of your practitioners. Uh, there are ways around this. There are talismans that improve your mental state. There's powers that improve your mental state. There's a pill which locks it, and that pill is fantastic um, because you can just take someone up to like 115 mental state and then lock them there forever. Uh, those things all matter. So you're going to find all of these little ways to optimize your, your practice. Just keep in mind the game won't hold any punches if you do something wrong. The game doesn't tell you that it's not a good idea to take something that, uh, you know, that conflicts. So if you, you know, if we were, we're a fire-based character, right? And if we were to take a, a wood-based martial art, that would cost us way more than it would be worth. So for a wood-based practitioner, it might be three attainment, but for us, it might be nine or 15. That would be terrible, but the game won't tell you that. You have to actually know how all these mechanics work, and it's a big pain in the butt. <laughs> there are lots of other things to learn about this game, but this should be enough to get you started. Just keep in mind that the thing that lets you transfer abilities between characters and between um, these various manuals, that's going to be the manual pavilion. It's much more important than it looks. Yeah. So have fun. Uh, oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. Uh, these martial artists, they have this condemnation and virtue. The things which raise the condemnation might surprise you. Attacking a wild animal will raise the condemnation, unless the wild animal is already attacking one of your characters. And that's why when you're trying to hunt something like, you know, a giant boar or whatever, if we wanted to hunt this guy, what we would do is we would bring our martial artist down there. And the idea is we know that the hunter isn't going to be able to take on the animal. But if we look on this mini map, what we would like is for this gray button to turn red because that will tell us that it's attacking and we can therefore attack it back. See, it's now red. And now that it is attacking, we can tell uh, our martial artist to finish it off. There we go. And if we take a look at that female bull, uh, it's dead, we can butcher it. And now if we look at the martial artist, no, it went up to one. Hmm. I might have been a little bit fast in the trigger there. Uh, Maybe killing animals raises the condemnation either way. I'm trying to think about the best way to do it. Either way, uh, condemnation can get out of control very easily, especially if you are an evil practitioner. So keep your eye on it. There are ways to lower it using events out in the game world, um, but they're pretty rare. So just just be careful about how you how you manage that sort of thing. If you want your character to be less lethal, you might want to build them um, a mace or something instead of the um, swords and spears that you might be using. This mace is a lot less lethal, and it will leave them bleeding on the ground, but it won't kill them. So therefore, your virtue is fine, right? <laughs> of course. Let's see. I think there were a couple more things that I wanted to cover, but I don't remember what they were. It's already been an hour and a half. Well, an hour. So maybe that's all we'll cover for today. There are going to be times when you can, um, over here for example, we can assign people here. We're going to have to go through some events before we can start to do this. Uh, but just keep in mind that these places can generate a tremendous amount of wheat and stone. So um, they're a pretty good uh, investment. But what their real purpose is, is to remove characters that have good stats but are going to be bad martial artists. So once you hit the cap, your population cap, you're going to want to change out some of the characters that you might have. That character is going to be a great martial artist. That's a terrible example. Um, ah, here. So this, uh, all of these characters are great martial artists. We kind of set it up to be that way. Well, let's say that this character didn't have any magic crafting and had a low key sense. You can see their stats are not too shabby. So what we would do is we would send them off to lead a, uh, a settlement or to join a settlement. They would simply vanish, and we would be able to replace them with someone new with different potentials. 
that's going to be the main reason to use those. Uh, once they get to a certain point, you got 25,000 people in each one of them, you can start to really harvest the heck out of them, and they'll provide you with a tremendous amount of inspiration. Um, they're a method of doing non-martial arts style ascension. Uh, they're very cool, but you do have to understand their purpose, and their purpose is to get rid of people who... Um, who just don't quite make that martial artist cut, you know? I think that was it. Hey, there's lots of other stuff that you'll learn, but these are the key pieces. Have a good one.